What's up everybody? This is the 2023 Kia Nero Hybrid. And for 2023, the Nero is all new. It's been completely restyled, much more radical styling I'll add as well. And uh, you have a bunch of different powertrain options. This is the regular hybrid we're looking at here. There's also a plug-in hybrid and a fully electric version as well, if you want to get into those. But as far as the hybrid goes, I think it's a really nice look. And they all look basically the same, aside from the electric one having a more blocked off nose. But that front end is very bold, but I think it looks really good personally. I know styling is subjective, but I think it looks really sweet there with that silver band that goes across the front end there gives it a very angry and menacing look and a little bit more of an SUV kind of crossover vibe than the previous generation as well and I really like the headlight cluster there below it and uh, coming down to the sides I think the sides are honestly the most interesting part of this vehicle because you have that huge arrow blade there and that out honestly kind of takes a page out of the Audi R8 supercars book uh, but it is actually functional here in addition to being an interesting styling piece uh, you can see there is a little pass through there for air to go through to the, into the back there and so it helps with the aerodynamics and looks really cool and distinctive and sets this apart from you know all the other hybrids out there that don't do anything like that and so i think it's a really cool look especially combined here with this cityscape green color you have here for this one it's a really nice look but i know it's not going to be for everyone otherwise they're going out to the back another very distinctive look there with those very tall kind of boomerang shaped taillights that are i think just a really nice look as well and a nice you know blended smooth back end there and overall, I just think they succeeded with making every angle of this car look interesting and visually appealing as well. Uh, I know it'll be a little polarizing, but I think the Kia personally just knocked out of the park here with the styling on the Nero. But let's start up and go for a drive. The Nero here has uh, the typical Kia key, which is still a really nice key. I love this key. It has the logo there and a little bit of like a plasticky metal kind of a thing here on the sides and just the buttons there right along the edge. And it's a really cool key, but of course it is keyless access, keyless entry and push button and start here on the Nero. So you just leave the key in your pocket, hit the engine start button, and it turns right on. Being a hybrid, you know, it doesn't always kick on the engine, uh, but it says you're ready to go and you put it in drive and go. And if you're curious to hear about the interior in the 2023 Nero, my wife and I just did a full in-depth interior review on this vehicle. So I'll link that at the end of this video. You can go watch that if you wanna hear all our thoughts on this interior and all the details on it. Overall though, because the vehicle has grown by about two and a half inches, it's actually giving you a lot more rear legroom there. Uh, and then otherwise it's the same modern Kia stuff you see in any other new Kia these days. Really impressive and uh, you know for the most part they really nailed everything and this is a really cool and unique take here on this new interior as well so definitely check out that video for all the details but overall a very nice place to be all right so setting off here in the 2023 Nero hybrid so first thing you notice here about the new Nero well first off visibility is really great you have a nice large windshield a pretty thin eight pillars and a great view out of the back other things here though is I'm actually really impressed by the power of the electric motor on its own it does 43 horsepower and 125 pound-feet of torque which doesn't sound like a ton but considering this thing only weighs about 3200 pounds you don't need a ton of grunt to get up and go at low speeds and so I've been impressed compared to the average hybrid that usually doesn't have very much grunt before it has to kick on the gas engine this has a good amount of grunt that I've been able to accelerate at reasonably slow paces up to you know about 25 miles per hour or so with that electric motor doing all the work and so if you're not in a hurry and you're just you know casually driving around Around, I was actually impressed at just how much driving I could actually do in electric mode here with just the regular hybrid version so that was one thing I was really impressed by uh, other things here that are uh, pretty good so you have a nice responsive brake pedal that feels natural and doesn't really give me any variability like some other hybrids uh, do sometimes and so it was pretty uh, you know good to use that another thing is the throttle response is pretty good for the most part since we have a naturally aspirated engine and you have those electric motors kicking in um, you know it's usually pretty responsive but the one uh, downfall of this whole powertrain setup, in my opinion, is this six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. There's been a few times where I've caught it out of gear, and unfortunately, this car only has an eco mode and a sport mode. There's no normal mode. So in eco mode, I found that it's tuned to really try and resist the downshift, and so there's been a lot of times where I've been waiting to be like, come on, and then it decides to go. And, uh, you know, it's also not always smooth with the transmission either, and there's been a few times where it's been kind of herky-jerky where, uh, you know, the electric motor kicks in and then it has to wait and the gas engine kicks on it's this disconnected unnatural feeling it's not very smooth and polished 
that's not all the time, but it is sometimes, and it's not rare, I'd say. It's, you know, f fairly frequent with the way that occurs. And so I just wish there was a little more polish done or a normal mode added to make it a bit more responsive without having to have it be crazy in sport mode. But uh, speaking of that sport mode, we're gonna go ahead and put it up into that mode. And let's turn down onto this back road here and see how it accelerates. And here we go. So that electric motor kicks in and I mean, it is very responsive in that sport mode. It immediately leapt into action there and accelerates fairly well for what it is. Again, the goal of this vehicle is high miles per gallon, not performance, not acceleration. And so as a result, you have a total of 139 horsepower from a 1.6 liter nationally aspirated four cylinder engine combined with that electric motor, which on its own does 43 horsepower, but again, combined it's 139 horsepower total. And all total, it's 195 pound feet of torque. If you want more power, the plug-in hybrid version gives you 180 horsepower using the same engine, but with a more powerful electric motor. And then there's also the electric version with 201 horsepower, which will be the quickest of the bunch. And I did review the previous generation Nero EV, which had you know, the same kind of setup for the most part. And it was pretty sporty and I was really impressed with that. So I think that would definitely, you know, be the most exciting one to go for the electric one. But, uh, you know, the thing is, you know, it's an 8.9 seconds zero to 60 time for the regular hybrid version here. And that is, you know, a little slower than the average family crossover. It isn't painfully slow if you're used to usual and stuff like this and you're not an enthusiast that's into sports cars or anything. Uh, but, you know, you definitely have to make sure that you are very deliberate about, you know, when you accelerate, how you merge. Uh, you know, you have to just kind of pre-plan those things a little bit. You don't have plentiful power, I'd say. And especially, you know, with the gas engine itself only doing about 106 horsepower on its own, it really has to work hard whenever you're beyond those low speeds where the electric motor can help you out a little bit more. So at higher speeds, that's where it really starts to show the lack of power a little bit. But other things here though, so we're on this little bit of a rougher road that generates some road noise typically. And it is a little bit on the noisy side. I did see the car and driver actually uh, in their measurements uh, measured that this is noisier inside than the previous generation for some reason. And so, you know, just keep that in mind if you're going from the old one to the new one. If it sounds a little noisier inside, that's, you know, partially why. But I think it's, you know, average for this segment and still kind of appropriate for, you know, vehicles like this that are not a luxury vehicle or anything like that. But anyway, we're kind of with some corners here and let's see how the handling is here in the Nero Hybrid. So in sport mode here, you have slightly heavier uh, steering and of course that more aggressive throttle response and stuff. And as far as the handling goes, it's not bad. Obviously, you know, we're not on sporty tires or anything. They're 225 wide, which isn't too bad, honestly, but they're just, you know, average, you know, all season kind of tires here. So not a ton of grip. And I do feel that it wants to push a little bit and you know, it certainly leans towards understeer and the limits are fairly low, but it's not bad. Um, you know, not the sportiest thing out there. I think if you want a sportier hybrid, the new Prius is definitely the way to go. It's much faster, handles better, as long as you can give up the extra practicality you get here in the Nero. Uh, I think the Prius is definitely gonna be the way to go for those who do want something a little sportier. But as far as, you know, this goes for the average commuter, it's gonna be totally fine. Handling is totally fine. It's not sloppy or anything. It's you know, still nice and tight with its handling. It's very composed and it's still very good. You know, it's just, it doesn't impress me, but it certainly doesn't really let me down either. It's just kind of par for the course, what you'd expect out of something like this. And there's nothing wrong with that. So I think handling is totally fine. And again, the fact they kept it, you know, just over 3,200 pounds means it's pretty nice and light, which is refreshing these days with so many other vehicles, you know, being so heavy and bloated. It's really great they kept the weight down on these. And with this new generation Nero, you do have a wheelbase that's about an inch longer than before. And so that'll certainly help to give you more stable and planted handling as well. One other interesting thing I wanted to add though about the driving experience here in the Nero is that you can kind of uh, change it up a little bit. So you have these paddle shifters here on the back of the steering wheel. And they have two different uh, purposes. Whenever you do have the gas engine on, they do function as paddle shifters for the six-speed automatic, and you can, you know, shift manually if you'd like. Whenever it's in electric mode, they actually uh, turn into regen paddles, and you can increase the amount of regen that it's doing while you're in that EV mode. And so if you're, you know, coasting down a hill and you want to, you know, get a little bit of extra battery juice out of, you know, this braking and the downhill motion and things like that, you just crank that up there with the paddle shifters and it gives you that extra little bit of regen which is really cool. I love that customization. I think it makes a lot of sense and helps you to really maximize your efficiency. If you're someone who wants to be an active participant in that, you know, hypermiling and that maximizing of your efficiency, it's really fun to be able to play with the paddles and do that. But here we go, merging onto the highway. You know, for 
the amount of power that it has, though, I think it actually is pretty respectable. And uh, yeah, you know, you just don't want to be uh, pulling out in front of 18 wheelers or anything like that. But aside from that, yeah, it's going to be totally fine for your average commute. But now we're out on the highway here, and I have it in the highway drive assist mode, which is the adaptive cruise control with lane keeping assist. And uh, this system, so if you've watched any other Kia and Hyundai reviews in the past few years, the highway drive assist system isn't one of the best systems out there in my opinion. It has let me down on several occasions where it doesn't hold the lane and it's a little tricky to tell when it's actually giving you assistance and when it isn't. It's not very clear about that. And uh, so as far as the Nero goes in my experience here this week, I've already been driving this vehicle for a whole week and it hasn't really let me down. It's been fine in this vehicle and this, you know, goes to show with these vehicles, you know, it depends on the kind of roads you're on, the circumstances, the, you know, whether the sun's glaring at the camera or not. There's all kinds of variables at play here, you know, how the roads are painted, all of that kind of stuff as far as how the system will perform. Um, but, you know, I'm just here to say that it does work pretty good most of the time. The adaptive cruise system works fine otherwise. It's really the lane keeping assist is the only part that I ever have an issue with. And even that, you know, like I said, does work pretty well sometimes. It's just not totally reliable and so therefore I don't trust it as much as I trust some of the other lane keep assist systems out there. But as we're coming up to a gentle corner here now, we can test it out. And while we are testing it out here, you know, one other thing too is out on the highway here, you know, you do have some road noise for sure. It's not super quiet here or anything. But again, for this segment of vehicle, I think it's totally acceptable and you know, not too disappointing or anything. And so it did a great, fine job just, you know, handling that corner, no problem. And uh, so again, especially if you're in a place where you don't have very many corners on your highway, uh, I think the system's gonna most of the time be really good. And you know, it should be a nice little bit of extra assistance. Again, you still have to always keep your hands on the wheel, always be paying attention, but it gives you a little bit of extra assistance there to help take a little bit of the fatigue out of those long highway drives. As far as the other safety tech goes here though in the near of course, uh, being a Kia, they give you a lot of really great standard features. Of course, you have the automatic emergency braking, you know, the lane keep assist, all that kind of stuff is standard here. And so, um, you know, it's really great. This one is a fully load EX Touring, so that's how you get the highway drive assist with its more advanced features and things like that. But, you know, all the other basic stuff is standard and, you know, it's just great that you don't have to, you know, pay a bunch of extra money for a bunch of extra safety features. Um, and especially it's nice here that, you know, these fully loaded ones come with all that good stuff as well. And the last couple of things I mentioned here about the Nero Hybrid are the fuel economy and then the pricing and how it compares to this competition. So first off, fuel economy. Uh, these are rated at 53 MPG in the city, 45 on the highway, and 49 combined. In my driving here, I've been uh, driving for about 130 miles now. I've been averaging 45 MPG, so I'm hitting right at that highway number, the lowest you know number there. And that's pretty good, considering I did do a little bit of idling to film this interior and stuff, and that did use mostly battery power, but they kick on the gas engine a little bit so that certainly dragged it down a little bit um, but aside from that you know I did do a pretty good mix of city and highway so you know I was hoping to get closer to that combined figure of 49 45 though still is pretty decent I think especially considering you know how much space you have in here all the luxury features and all that kind of stuff you know I think that that's pretty decent fuel economy even though it's not the best out there it's certainly not bad but then the last thing to mention here is the pricing and how it compares to those competitors now there's really no direct competitor to this aside from the Prius I guess you could say but the Prius you know it's not trying to be a crossover like this is trying to be a crossover it's still it's kind of just a larger hatchback the true hybrid crossover within Kia is the Sportage hybrid and so you know I could go through all the compact crossovers and their hybrid versions but you know that's gonna take way too long and you know they all have their pros and cons but the two competitors I did really want to point out here are for one uh, the Kia Sportage hybrid that is I think the closest competitor and it's just ironic because you know it's from Kia and so obviously if you're shopping the Nero I'm assuming you're open to Kias and the thing with the Sportage is you get about a hundred more horsepower with its hybrid version you also have the option to go up and get an all-wheel drive version that does drop fuel economy and the even a front-wheel drive Sportage hybrid does give you about 6 mpg less combined than this. 6 mpg is you know fairly significant but you're still getting 43 mpg in a crossover and so I think that that Sportage hybrid is really impressive and the kicker is that this vehicle as tested these start around just under $28,000 this one as tested is about $36,500 and for about $37,700 so basically like 
1200 bucks more, you can get that Sportage Hybrid comparably equipped. And so you're looking at a thousand extra dollars for way more power, way more space on the inside, and you know, only a slight bit less fuel economy. To me, you know, it kind of puts the Nero in a niche, and I was honestly surprised to see the Nero come back for a new generation because I was like, oh, yeah, we're just gonna get a Sportage. We will see if the sales numbers bear that out or not, but because the Sportage Hybrid is so competitive, at least on paper, I have not driven one, I've driven the regular Sportage, but not the Hybrid yet, but at least on paper, to me, that seems to make more sense. Unless you absolutely want those extra six MPG and you don't care about having the extra space of the Sportage, the screens are bigger, they're 12 inch screens in that versus the 10 inch screen here you have in this. There's just a lot going for the Sportage. The Sportage is very good here for this new generation. And I personally would give up six MPG to have the much better experience, the much better power, all that of the Sportage hybrid. Um, so that is, I think, really the toughest competitor. The other competitor though is the brand new Prius, which is very impressive. I did drive that a few months back and I mean, that's going to give you over 50 mpg even if you go for the luxurious version with the big wheels if you go for the lower trims you're going to be getting you know over, over like 55 mpg in that so i mean way better fuel economy than this they also have almost 200 horsepower now and there's an option to get an all-wheel drive version for the prius as well which still does better fuel economy than this does um and then on top of that you also have a bigger screen inside the prius now the downside of the prius is that the prius doesn't have a large hatch they really downsize the cargo area compared to the last generation prius so, you know, it really, I think the Nero does have this niche where it splits the two differences. If you don't need a ton of cargo space and you want something sporty and you don't need the crossover thing, get a Prius. If you want a ton of cargo space and you want the crossover practicality and, and all of that, I'd say go for a Sportage. If you find yourself in the middle where you want some more practicality than a Prius, but you don't need as much as a Sportage, and you find yourself in that perfect little sweet spot in the middle where neither of those vehicles fit you perfectly, then I could see the Nero fitting for some people. I just think that that's a very narrow sliver of the market share there where I think this appeals to that buyer. I don't think there's very many of those buyers out there. So that's why I'm skeptical about how this will do compared to the Sportage. Uh, but I'm just glad they did keep it around because a lot of other companies are getting rid of their hybrid stuff or, you know, switching to different strategies. And I'm glad they're still keeping with, you know, having a nice large hatchback, lots of practicality, really the perfect blend of practicality uh, for a lot of people without going up to a huge SUV. And, um, you know, I do certainly see the appeal here for the Nero. It's just, again, like I said, a very limited appeal. And, um, you know, I think I'd be more tempted by the Prius or the Sportage if it were my money. But overall, still really great. And of course, the, the key is you also get a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty, which also sweetens the deal here of this over like the Toyota, for example. But again, that doesn't help you out with the Sportage, which is also a Kia. And, you know, the last thing I'll say about pricing, too, is that you know, the plug-in hybrid is about $4,500 more expensive. And yeah, you get an extra 40 horsepower, but you also get 250 extra pounds of weight. That does do 33 miles of all electric range. So that is certainly going to be, you know, nice and will certainly save you even more gas money if you, you know, uh, don't drive beyond that very much, or even if you do and you can charge every night, it's just be really nice to have 33 all electric miles there. And certainly, you know, is appealing, but you know, another $4,500 on top of this. And again, there's also the Kia Sportage with the plug-in hybrid version of that. And you have that same conundrum you have here with the regular hybrid version. The electric one is a little bit of a tougher sell these days because you don't get the tax credit for those anymore thanks to the you know rules that they changed. So that makes it a little bit of a tougher sell compared to some of the other competitors that do get the tax credit. And um, so all the Nero's kind of are in a, a tough spot, I think, honestly. And uh, it's just unfortunate because I think did a great job on the styling, did a great job on the redo here. Just the positioning and just the strength of the Kia lineup really, I think, makes it tough for the Nero. But anyway, that's all of my thoughts here on the 2023 Nero. Let me know your thoughts on it in the comments below. Please also leave a like, comment, and subscribe to keep these videos coming. Huge thanks to Kia also for providing me here with this vehicle to review for you guys today. And yeah, definitely check out that interior review as well if you want to, you know, hear all the details on this interior. But thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.